Alana's got something planned for y'all, so um, y'all play follow later. Thank the Lord for our children, our young people. I used to be a child. I used to be young. <laughs> something happened along the way. Woo. Praise God. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. I'd like to thank Adam for sharing the word last week. Um, I, I figured that, it, that I would be able to be here. I had my uh, surgery on Friday, and I thought, well, I'll be here. Uh, the spirit was willing, but the flesh was wimpy. <laughs> but I just, I just thank God. It's good to be in his house. But uh, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Adam, for sharing the word um, last week. God bless you. Well, I covet your prayers this morning um, because the Lord has laid something on my heart. And when I was talking to Glenna about what I was going to share, uh, she said, really? <laughs> I said, yes, yes. So perhaps it would be good if we just bow our heads just a, just a moment. Jesus, I have a confession to make. I need your help. That's nothing new. I need your help all the time. But especially, Lord, when I come before God's people and try to share your word, share uh, the truth, Lord, I need your help. I thank you, Lord, for this time of worship. I believe it's prepared our hearts. It's prepared our hearts to receive what you have to speak into us today. Uh, Lord, you reminded us that we can testify. If we surrender you, we can testify as well with my soul. It's not dependent on the circumstances. It's because of our trust in you. It's because of who you are. So God, bless us now. Bless us. Bless your word. May it speak to our spirits and feed us. Touch my body, I pray, God, and my spirit and my mind right now. Rest on me, I pray, God. May it be a blessing for your glory, Jesus. God, thank you. In Jesus' name, can the church say amen? Amen. Well, this morning... God's going to help me, I believe, to share with you some biblical principles in explosive times. I think a lot of us can say, I've never seen times like this before. Amen? Well, there's an there's a author, his name is Ken Sandy. Uh, he wrote an excellent book called The Peacemaker. Um, if you have any unrest in your, in your home, in your family, your relationship, if you can't even get along with yourself... I recommend you check out that book, The Peacemaker. Ken Sandy wrote it uh, many years ago. I think he sold probably 500,000 copies. I mean, it's a, it's a great book. He's the, he's the, the uh, author of that book and the founder of Peacemaker Ministries and Relational Ministry, Wisdom 360. And he recently wrote an excellent article and gave permission for, for anyone who wanted to to share it. And his article was entitled, 17 Ways to Respond to Explosive Politics. 17 ways. So I'm going to share uh, some of what he had to say and also God's word as it pertains to this. So I'm going to talk about where we live right now. Right now, us. Those of us sitting right here. I'm not talking to people who aren't here necessarily. They may listen to it later, maybe be blessed. But I'm, but I'm not talking about past or future. I'm talking about right now. In a little over a week, millions of people will be rejoicing or weeping as the 2020 political season comes to its climactic end. Can you say amen? amen. That's what's going to happen. There's going to be some rejoicing and some weeping. The emotions that are now building to a crescendo will not dissipate quickly or harmlessly. If anybody thinks once we have the election, everything's going to calm down, i got a news flash for you. Hold on to your seats. Many family workplace and church relationships will be further damaged and in some cases destroyed as heated emotions continue to flow like lava from a volcano. That's the bad news. That's bad news. But here's the good news. The good news is that you have a unique opportunity to minister to people whose lives and relationships have been profoundly impacted by these events. Yes, I'm talking to you. This is an opportunity. With the turmoil that we have, these explosive times that we live in, this is an opportunity for Christians to shine. This is an opportunity for us to minister to other people. 
So here are some biblical principles you can model and also teach to others during these explosive times. So we're going to talk about how to win graciously and how to lose graciously. Oh, God help us. I'll tell you what, we like that winning business, don't we? That losing business, not so much. I remember, uh, I'm not going to name any names, but his initials are, are Adam Herod. Uh, when he first started T-Ball, they, they didn't keep score, Margaret. They said, we don't keep score. That's what they said. But, of course, the kids kept score. You know how it is. And, of course, they were keeping their own little score in the first game. Uh, I believe you were playing for the Braves, maybe. But, anyway, you lost that game. They weren't keeping score, but they knew who won and who lost. And Kelly, Adam took that ball glove that I paid with my hard-earned money, right? And he threw that thing in the dirt. And he kicked the dirt. You know, he was not a happy camper. And I said, son, where did you learn that? Do you know what you said? TV. <laughs> TV. It like that losing business. So we're going to talk about how to win graciously and how to lose graciously. So, um... I hope you voted. If you haven't voted, you still have time. I encourage you to vote. Vote. I'm thankful. I may not agree with the way everybody votes, but I'm thankful we, we can vote in this country. I really am. I don't agree with what everybody says, but I'm thankful we live in a country where we have freedom of speech. I, I don't agree with everything that people protest about. You can protest about just about anything, but I'm thankful we live in a country that's one of our rights to be able to, to protest. So I'm thankful for all those things. So let's talk about how to win graciously, because I'm sure you would like to be on the winning side. Well, let's talk about what Jesus had to say. Uh, Tony, I think I might have a little bit of typo on this, but it's okay. Uh, Matthew 7 and 12. Uh, yeah, that's actually supposed to say KJV, not KVJ, anyway, for those of you that are really paying attention. Uh, for the King James Version, uh, Matthew 7 and 12. This, this is Jesus talking on the Sermon on the Mount. And so he's speaking to them, but it's for us today. We learn from this. And you all know this. Jesus said, therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Can you say amen? amen. That's what Jesus said. Just treat others the way you want to be treated. If we do that, that would solve a lot of this turmoil. Just treat people the way you want to be treated. So... Here we go. If your candidate prevails, this will be an ideal time to practice the golden rule. That is, treat others as you would want to be treated. If your candidate had lost, just treat others the way you'd want to be treated. So in other words, here's what you should do. If your candidate wins, first, you should be humble. Be humble. Don't act like this was your personal accomplishment. For it is God who raises up leaders and deposes them. I believe it's in God's hands. I believe we should vote. I really do. But God is sovereign. Make no mistake about it. Let me take you back, way back, to where, where Daniel, Daniel, God had revealed a dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had. King Nebuchadnezzar had this dream and no one could figure it out. And so God revealed it to Daniel and Daniel explained it to him. But here's, here's what the Bible records in Daniel chapter 2, 20 and 22. It says, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belong wisdom and might. He changes times and seasons. He, talking about God, removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. God is showing Daniel that, that he, God, he can, he can set him up. He can take him down. You believe God can do anything? Yes, he can. As the checkered history of Israel's king reveals, God raises up good leaders to bless people and poor leaders to chastise them. Read the book. 
So let us recognize that God is the ultimate mover in these events. And let's pray that our newly elected officials will prove to be the good leaders and not the bad leaders. Can you say amen? amen. So we should be humble. And, and next, we should be sensitive. Boy, that, that, that's, that's not uh, popular nowadays. Be sensitive. <laughs> Don't celebrate your victory in the presence of those who are grieving. Quietly rejoice with those who share your views, but be silent or subdued when talking to those who differ. It would be terribly unloving to compound their sadness and grief. Be sensitive. Be compassionate. Look at somebody and say, be compassionate. You know what? Be compassionate. That sounds like something a Christian would do. In other words, we ought to be Christ-like. And we ought to treat others the way we want to be treated. So be compassionate. Instead of just simply holding your tongue, ask God to give you some empathy, compassion for those who see this election as a personal and national catastrophe. Some people, if their candidate doesn't win, they're going to think it's the end of the world. Now we can make fun of them or we can be compassionate. Instead of just dismissing their feelings out of hand, make a real effort to imagine how they are feeling. That shouldn't be hard to do. Imagine how you would feel. And you treat them the way you would want to be treated. And then let that compassion move you to engage them with gentleness and kindness. That sounds like being a Christian. Can you say amen? How about this? If your candidate wins, be honest. Be honest. Like every other person who has occupied the Oval Office, our next president, whoever it is, will have both strengths and weaknesses in their competence and their character. We need to be honest about these facts and let them move us to reasonable conversation and constant prayer. So be honest. Next, if our candidate wins, we should be patient. Sounds like being a Christian. Allow people time to grieve, to lament, and to vent their disappointments, anger, and fears. Don't try to lecture or debate with them while their emotions are stirred up. You want to really cause a fuss? Then try to reason with somebody who's being unreasonable. Timing. Very important, isn't it? Timing. There's a time and a place, and there's a right time to say the right thing in the right way. So be careful about poking the angry bear. Be patient. Give them time. It may take months to process those feelings and see what develops during the months ahead. So be honest, be patient, and also be discerning. If others lash out to you or at you, remember they are probably acting out in fear, not malice. Fear typically reveals itself in one of three ways. Control, anger, or withdrawal. So if, even if someone seems to be personally angry at you or rejecting you, choose to not take it personally and do all you can do to leave the door open between you, even if they're trying to slam it shut. Here is my fear. My fear and concern is that after this election, families are going to split. Churches are going to split. People aren't going to be able to work together again. Now, who do you think is at work in all of that? That is not the work of God. That is not the work of God. So, we have a place, we have a, a part to play in this. We can be a peacemaker, as Ken Sandy's book, Peacemaker, writes about. We can be a peacemaker. So we need to be discerning. We need to understand that the enemy's at work. It is, it is not unlike a relationship between a husband and a wife. I have to remind myself sometimes that Glenna is not my enemy. Because sometimes I feel like she's my enemy. And she feels the same way about me. And you think that comes from God? That's the devil trying to stir it up. I'll tell you what, you want to really have a challenge in your marriage? Then agree with somebody to go speak at a couple's retreat, a marriage retreat. And I'll tell you what, you will have a week. You will have a week. And Glenn and I used to do that quite often. We've been in several places in the southeast, Florida, South Carolina, 
North Carolina, Tennessee, and uh, we used to do this quite often. And, and after a while, we, we finally wised up. We just knew, okay, we're going this weekend, and we're going to be sharing about how we got to love each other and all that. We know what's coming. We know what's coming. And so what we had to do is we had to pray together. And I, had, and I said, Glenn, you are, you are my enemy. I mean, you're not my enemy. <laughs> you're not my enemy. That's the devil trying to stir us up. That's what the devil wants to do with people today. He just wants to stir us up and divide us. And also, if our candidate wins, we should try to find agreement. If others try to take out their fears on you, try to redirect the conversation to a neutral topic. That's what Molly was talking about with students. If they're acting out, try to, try to redirect them, right? Try to, try to change, change the focus. Um, you know, maybe we can find something that we can agree with. Maybe we can uh, discuss with them and say, I understand you feel disappointed. I've felt disappointed before. We could say, uh, you know, there are some things we ought to be able to find to agree with people. Because maybe some of the things that people are upset about that we disagree with, we say, I, I agree with you that things need to be better. And you might even ask them, what are some ways you think we could do that? Maybe that'll start a, a productive conversation instead of just turmoil. How about this? Here's something we can do if our candidate wins. Bless those who curse you. If other people are harsh and unloving or unjust toward you, do not respond likewise. Instead, remember what Jesus said. Listen to what Jesus said, Luke 6, 27, 28. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Now there we have it, directly from God's word to our heart. If your candidate wins the election and somebody really takes out their frustrations on you, acts like they're your enemy, then love them. If they're acting like they hate you, do good to them. If they're cursing you, then bless them. If they're trying to abuse you, pray for them. Now, I confess, I can't do that. Not without God. But I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Those are the kinds of things the Spirit of God was inspiring Paul to write when he said we can do these all things. The things he wants us to do. To be good to others. So bless those who curse you. All these actions are well summarized when Paul wrote to the church in Colossae in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. Paul said to this, said this to us. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts. If your candidate wins, have a compassionate heart. Kindness. If your candidate wins, be kind. Humility, meekness, and patience. Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, what are we supposed to do? Forgive. Forgive. Forgiving each other. Wow, what a concept. What a concept. And how do we forgive? Even as the Lord has forgiven you. In other words, we didn't deserve it. He forgave us anyway. I can make you a promise. After this election, some people are going to act ugly. Aren't they? Maybe some people you love, they are going to act ugly. And so what are you going to do? Are you going to act ugly back? Well, that'll fix them. I mean, that's really going to make things better. Is that'll teach them. But what if we forgive them? What if we love them? You know what may happen? People may say, that doesn't make sense to me. How can you be forgiving to me when I've been so bad to you? And then we don't point them here. We point them to Jesus point them to Jesus. Forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. I'll tell you what, love will make a difference, right? That's how to win graciously. I, I can't imagine there's anybody here if you care about the election. 
I, I can't imagine there's anybody here that cares that doesn't want to win. I mean, that's just, that's just kind of our nature. We want to win. We want to be on the winning side. We want our candidate to win. And maybe you will. And those are some ideas, what you can do, some suggestions, some recommendations, and even some commands from the Lord about how you should act. Now let's flip it over a little bit. We talked about how to win. Now we're going to talk about how to lose. Graciously. How to lose. Graciously. Anybody here want to lose? No volunteer? No, we don't sign up to lose, do we? That's not what we're interested in. We want to win. Uh, if you're like me, you may be hoping your candidate wins. If you're like me, you may be praying your candidate wins. But just for a few moments, let's talk about how to lose graciously. I know this is, well, this is shopping time right here. Woo! How to lose. Well, listen, if your candidate does not prevail, then this will be an ideal time for you, too, to practice the golden rule. In other words, behave in exactly the way you'd want others to behave if their candidate had lost. Okay, we talked about how you do if you win, how you treat others that lost. Well, now let's flip it around. What if you lost? Then act the way you wish they had acted, okay? So let's talk about how to lose graciously. Here's the first thing. Trust God. Trust God. Would you look at your neighbor and tell them that? Trust God. Trust God. You mean I should trust God even if my candidate loses the presidential, presidential election? Yes. Show me where it says in here, your candidate loses. Don't trust God anymore. God's not in control anymore. God's not on the throne anymore. Trust God. Trust God. That's how we can lose graciously. We still trust God. Now, I wonder, is there anyone here that every time, this would be interesting, you don't have to answer. But, but answer if you feel like it and if this is true about you. That every time you voted for president, your candidate has been elected. Did anybody hear this ever happen? Anybody? Me either. Me either. So, so we learned, I hope, I hope at least once you were right. <laughs> uh, there were times I was frustrated. I'm like, wow, it seems like I'm always... I'm always for the, for, the, for the wrong person or the person that doesn't get uh, elected. But I still voted. I still voted. So we've had experience winning and losing. So first we should trust God. Remember that God's thoughts are higher than your thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways, right? You've heard that before. Prophet Isaiah told us that, 55 and 9. You know, we, we, we say, well, I don't understand God. Well, do we always understand God? No, we don't. If he raises someone to power who you think is unqualified for the office, and that wouldn't be difficult based on the history of our country, trust that God knows what he is doing. It could be that he intends to discipline us through poor leaders, or he may be planning to bless us in surprising ways through leaders who eventually prove to exceed our expectations. So if your candidate loses, Trust God. Can you say amen? amen? Next, if your candidate loses, choose your attitude. Choose your attitude. Don't let other people drive your attitude. You choose your attitude. Uh, Victor Frankl survived the horrors of Auschwitz, in the concentration camp, but he lost his entire family. And in spite of all the abuse and the oppression he experienced, he had the wisdom to write this. Victor Frankl said, Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. And this principle of human freedom and responsibility is just as true today. Whatever disappointments you face in life, you still have the freedom to choose an attitude that enables you to move ahead hopefully and constructively. So choose your attitude. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because if my candidate wins, I'm going to trust God and pray for my candidate. If my candidate loses, you know what I'm going to do? 
I'm going to trust God and pray for the candidate who won. I am. That's what I'm going to do. Here's what you should do if your candidate loses. Talk it out without taking it out. Taking it out. Instead of venting your emotions at people who might feel personally attacked, talk out your initial feelings with people who share your concerns, but also have the maturity and wisdom to know when it's time to move from sharing emotions to praying and discussing constructive responses. In other words, rather than just griping about it, what are we going to do about it? Pray about it, yeah. If my candidate wins, it's going to drive me to my knees. If my candidate loses, it's going to drive me to my knees. I was talking to our state bishop recently, and I said, Sir, I said, no matter what happens, you're going to have at least half, if not more than half of the country upset. That is just what seems like is going to happen. And I said, the real, the real issue is what are the people that are going to be upset going to do? But there's more to it. What are the people that are not upset going to do? Because what we really need to do to move forward is we need to work together. And if we're attacking each other, I mean, can't we see the hand of the enemy? I remember when I was a young man, uh, a young teenager, I suppose, and uh, somebody was telling me that uh, one of the Russian leaders had said, they will never need to attack us militarily. They will never be a need for that, to attack America. Because we'll just destroy ourselves. I mean, that's pitiful, isn't it? But can you see it happening? Can you see it happening? Attacking, attacking each other. So talk it out without taking it out if your candidate loses. If your candidate loses, resist emotional hijacking. Intense emotions can overpower rational thinking. When you get real upset about something, it can cause you to say and do things that you may regret. So instead of damaging valuable relationships and making yourself look foolish in the practice, here's what you can do is, uh, in, the, in the process I meant, Here's what you can do is practice uh, what um, Ken Sandy calls the READ principle. R-E-A-D. R-E-A-D. So, so when your emotions get the best of you and, and you're tempted to, to react on it, then follow this READ principle. R is recognize and name your emotions. Understand what you're dealing with. Are you angry? Are you hurt? Are you sad? Or, you know, what is it? So, so recognize and name these emotions. And secondly, evaluate their source. Where, where does this come from? Next, anticipate the consequences of following them. What's going to happen if I act on these? In other words, think before you act. And the last part of that R-E-A-D is direct them in a constructive course. What can I do to make things better instead of make things worse? So remove, resist emotional hijacking. Next, take your fears to God. Can you say Amen. If my candidate loses, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to deal with fear. I'm going to name that emotion. I'm going to say, what in the world is going on? If my candidate loses, I'm gonna, one of the things I'm going to think is that people lost their mind. And what's going to happen next? You know, you know, so what I need to do with that fear that I feel, I need to identify it. And I need to take it to God. Because fear, as I said before, reveals itself in one of three ways. Either I'm going to try to control things, I'm going to try to act out in anger, I'm going to just kind of try to withdraw. And if we sense these tendencies in ourselves, we need to have a prayerful look behind them to identify the fears that are fueling them. Take these fears to God in prayer. Trusting that God will make good what he promises in his word. Here's what he said in his word about fear. Fear not, Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. If your candidate loses, go to the scripture. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Oh, but my candidate lost. Does that, does that negate the word of God? No, sir. The word of God is still true. My candidate lost, but I can go to the word and I can find where it says, God says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So if your candidate loses, take your fears to God. Somebody say amen. amen. Here's something we should do. If your candidate loses, I recommend this very strongly. This is from Ken Sandy's article where he came up with 17 ways. He said if your candidate loses, consider this. Unplug. Unplug. Social media can be like wood to a fire. 
The wise man said in Proverbs 26 and 20, Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tailbearer, the strife ceaseth. In other words, some people, some people are going to get on Facebook no matter what happens, and they're going to try to stir things up. Some foreign governments are going to get on Facebook and pretend like they're people they're not and try to stir things up. They're already doing that. Well, here's a tip for you. If you're on social media, you do not have to comment on every post. You don't. You don't have to like it. You don't have to love it. You don't have to do anything. You know what you can do? Pray for these. Pray for people. I do that a lot of times. I see something and I say, and I just stop. I say, God, God help it. God, God help it. Sometimes I ask myself this. Do they realize what they were sharing? Sometimes I see people share things, and if you happen to click on what they shared, it can get pretty vulgar, pretty ugly. And I'm thinking, did they just see a headline? Did, did they not think it through? We need to remember that what we say, what we say reflects on who we serve. What we say reflects on who we serve. So if your candidate loses, you may want to consider unplugging. Because every, every time you read another distressing tweet or Instagram post or Facebook comment or news report, you'll keep your fears and anxieties burning. So give yourself a little vacation. Turn off your feeds. Silence your accounts and decompress for a few days. And then when you check back in a week or two, you'll be amazed at how much more objectively you can think about recent events. Just give it some time. If your candidate loses, one of the things you should do is consecrate your concerns to God. When the Apostle Paul was chained in prison for his faith, he realized he had two choices. He could either curse these chains by complaining and doubting God's goodness, or he could just consecrate these chains to God. To consecrate means to declare something sacred, to devote it irrevocably, irrevocably that's a hard word to say, to the worship and service of God. Paul chose to consecrate his chains to God, listen, to Christ. Listen to what he said in Philippians 1 and 20. My eager expectation, he's in chains in prison. My eager expectation and hope is that I will not be ashamed about anything. But that now as always with all boldness, Christ will be highly exalted in my body, whether by, by, by life or by death. So trusting that God was always working for his good, Paul could sincerely pray. This is your situation. That's how we could pray. If our candidate loses, we could say, Lord, this is in your hands. Show me how I can respond in a way that honors you and pleases you. We can imitate Paul by doing the same thing with our concerns about our country's political situation. Next, we should, if your candidate loses, you should channel your concerns into constructive action. Our country was founded on the shared vision that all people are created equally and endowed by God with the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we've made great progress toward achieving that vision. But there is much left to do. Can you say amen? we got a ways to go. I'm thankful for the progress we've made. But we have a ways to go. So we need to identify the areas that God seems to be calling us to address. And then do all you can to promote repentance and improvement. Listen to what God's word says in Isaiah chapter 1, 16 to 17. God speaks to us and says, wash yourselves, not the other people. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless and plead the widow's cause. And if your candidate loses, Above all else, pray. Pray. Our country is facing division and challenges that have been aggravated by months and months of political rhetoric that has been repeated and magnified by both sides. Therefore, this is a time to obey God's command, to pray earnestly for all the people in our nation, especially for those who are in positions of political responsibility. I started each section on what it, how to win graciously and how to lose graciously, reminding you of the golden rule. Treat others the way you would want to be treated. If you were elected president of the United States, then we would all go to our knees. No, we wouldn't. <laughs> if you were elected president of the United States, wouldn't you want somebody praying for you? 
And if you believe that, then we should pray for whoever the president of the United States is. We should pray for our leaders. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us to do that. All these things I'm talking about can be summed up this way. If your candidate wins, act like a Christian. And if your candidate loses, act like a Christian. In other words, be a Christian and act like a Christian regardless of what happens. Because I am a Christian first. I am a Christian first. That is most important. My political affiliation is important to me, but it's not important as me being a Christian. My citizenship is very important to me. I serve this country. That's important to me. But what's more important is that I'm a Christian. So no matter what, act like a Christian. So listen to what God's Word says. Paul's writing to Timothy, and he says in chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. All people. So read your Bible carefully. Look at it when you get home today. And see if it says all people except for presidents. Nope. All people except for the other party. Nope. Nope. All people except for those that I disagree with. Nope. We should be praying, interceding, and, and giving thanksgiving for all people, for kings. They didn't have presidents back then, they had kings. And all who are in high positions, but I didn't vote for them. Does that excuse you? No, it does not excuse you. My heart breaks. My heart is broken and my, my soul is heavy. When I see Christian brothers and sisters uh, degrading leaders, no matter who they are, degrading them. And my heart breaks when I think about, are, are you praying for these leaders? Are, are you obeying the word of God? Has, has Somehow have you found a loophole that says, well, I didn't vote for this person, so I don't have to pray for them. I don't see that. Now, I'm sure there are some people who would disagree with me, but God bless you. I don't see a loophole in God's word. I see God's word telling me and telling you that we should make supplications, prayers, intercession, thanksgiving for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions. That we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. Now, unless you've been hiding in a bunker somewhere, that's probably a poor choice of words. Unless you've been isolated somewhere, uh, you know this is true. There are Christians who have not been acting in a godly and dignified way throughout this election. And I say to my brothers and sisters, shame on us. If we're not acting in a dignified, a godly way, then where have we found an excuse to no longer be peaceful, be kind? That doesn't mean we can't have strong opinions. That doesn't mean we can't have differing opinions. But we still need to be Christ-like. We don't need to be attacking and devouring each other. God help us. God help our nation. If your candidate loses, above all else, pray. We should pray for repentance from sin, for humility and deliverance from pride, for genuine compassion for the disadvantaged, for true and uniform justice, for a reverent fear of God that moves people to obey his commands. And most of all, we should pray for the gospel, the good news to go forth with power. If your candidate wins, pray for revival. If your candidate loses, guess what you should do? Pray for revival. If your candidate wins, pray for the candidate. If your candidate loses, pray for the candidate. If your candidate wins, act like a Christian. If your candidate loses, act like a Christian. If your candidate wins, trust God. If your candidate loses, trust God. If your candidate wins, bless those who curse you. If your candidate loses, bless them who curse you. You're getting it? No matter whether our, my candidate or your candidate wins or loses, I'm still going to trust God. I'm still going to follow his word. And I'm still going to proclaim that Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Changing hearts is what will change our land. 
We can pray for God to give all of our leaders, especially the, the man who will sit in the Oval Office, the humility and wisdom that enabled Abraham Lincoln to guide our country through a dreadful civil war and enabled Ronald Reagan to lead us out of the Cold War, which threatened to annihilate human civilization. We desperately need leadership today. Can you say amen? Our country needs leadership. We need leadership. God help us. So here's what we should do. Let us pray earnestly for God's continued patience, mercy, and grace as we seek to repent from our sins, learn from our mistakes, and turn these distressing political events into an opportunity for mutual God-honoring ministry. Can you say amen? I don't know whether your candidate will win or lose, but I do believe God's word speaks to right where we are right now. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. You know that song? That's all I ask, to be like him. All through life's journey. That's all I want to be. I just want to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. That's what we should be. I wonder if I remember that song. Maybe help me. Yeah.